Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Born-Huter-Ferguson method, or the BF method for short. This is one of the most common actuarial techniques for estimating ultimate losses or loss reserves. And as simple as it is, it's not very well understood outside of actuarial circles. So this isn't going to be a very technical conversation. In fact, the purpose of this video is to share with insurance professionals outside of the actuarial discipline the fundamentals of the BF method. I'll share with you the one question you absolutely must ask if you are relying on results produced from the BF method. And as important as this question is, I can assure you there's few people who are actually asking it. I'm Don Grimm, actuary and owner of Archer Actuarial Consulting. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. Let's start our discussion of the BF method by presenting it in its most general form. In this formula, the estimate for ultimate loss via the BF method is equal to known loss plus unknown loss. Pretty simple, right? One thing you should understand before we delve into this formula is that estimates of ultimate loss derived from the BF method are applicable to a collection of losses or potential future losses, such as an accident year. So for example, this method would not be applicable for estimating the ultimate value of a single claim. And going forward in this presentation, we're going to assume that our loss data is organized by accident year, since that's one of the most common ways to aggregate loss data. Let's talk about the two components of ultimate loss in our formula, known loss and unknown loss. Recognize that what is known or unknown changes over time. So for example, before an accident year begins, all loss associated with that accident year will be unknown. And after it begins, a portion of the loss will be known and a portion of the loss will be unknown. Eventually, once all claims are paid and closed, all loss will be known and none will be unknown. So the takeaway here is that estimates of ultimate loss via the BF method generally vary with the age of the accident year. So the BF method can be adapted to various scenarios. However, the two most popular versions are the paid version and the incurred version. In the paid version, the estimate of ultimate loss via the BF method equals paid loss plus unpaid loss. And in the incurred version, it's equal to incurred loss plus loss that has been incurred but not yet reported. So this is a good place to mention that in this context, incurred loss is defined as reported loss, which is the sum of paid loss and case reserves. So here, incurred loss refers only to losses that have been reported, i.e. are known to the insurer. So notice how the first term in each formula corresponds to the known loss in the general form. And the second term in each formula corresponds to the unknown loss in the general form. Next, we're going to look at the paid version a little bit more closely. I just want to tweak the terminology here to make it a little bit more familiar. Paid loss and unpaid loss is a nice way to put it because it corresponds to known loss and unknown loss. But a more familiar way to phrase this is paid loss plus an estimate of loss reserves. Because estimated loss reserves is just another way of saying unpaid loss. And on the incurred side, it's incurred loss plus IBNR. Because IBNR, it's just another way to say that losses have been incurred, but not yet reported. So we're gonna stick with the latter versions and the naming conventions here, just to keep it a little bit more familiar. In order to make this a little bit more tangible, let's look at a quick example. And in this example, we have an accident year at age 12 months. At this point in time, the accident year has $30,000 of paid loss and $100,000 of incurred loss. These are just sample amounts, I made them up. So in the formula, the paid version of the BF method, the estimate of ultimate loss for an accident year at 12 months would be equal to the $30,000 in paid loss plus 
the estimate of loss reserves at age 12. We're going to talk more about the second term in the next slide, but for now I just want you to see the general format of the paid version of the method. And in the incurred version, the estimate of ultimate loss would equal the $100,000 of incurred loss plus the estimate of IBNR at age 12. Okay, so let's spend a little bit more time talking about the second term in the BF equation. By now you can appreciate that the BF method produces an estimate of ultimate loss that comprises known loss and unknown loss. In this method, the unknown portion of the loss is calculated based on just two assumptions. The first assumption is an estimate of the percent of loss unknown at the evaluation date. And in practice, this percentage is obtained from an actuarially selected loss development pattern. If you're not familiar with loss development patterns, be sure to check out my video on that topic. The second assumption is an estimate of the initial expected ultimate loss for the accident here. And this assumption is sometimes called the a priori expected ultimate loss because it's often derived prior to the beginning of the accident year. So this is where things get interesting. The estimate of ultimate loss produced by the BF method relies on an a priori assumption of the same value it's attempting to estimate. So how are these amounts different? First of all, the initial expected ultimate loss or a priori is usually determined before the beginning of the accident year. So it's estimated independently of the known loss amount for that particular accident year. The resulting estimate of ultimate loss via the BF method reflects a prorated portion of the initial expected ultimate plus the actual known loss as of the evaluation date. So hopefully you should be able to see that it's critical that these two assumptions are derived thoughtfully since they fully determine the unknown loss portion of the BF. And the only purpose of having the BF method is to estimate the unknown loss portion. Obviously known loss does not require any estimation. So one of the things I really want you to take from this video is that in this method, Estimates of unknown loss are independent of known loss for the same accident year. So in the paid version of the BF method, estimates of loss reserves are independent of paid loss. And in the incurred version of the BF method, estimates of IBNR are independent of incurred loss. Now's a good time to share with you the one question you must be asking if you rely on results produced by the BF method. And that question is, what is the source of the initial expected ultimate loss underlying the BF method? Remember, this assumption, along with the percent of loss unknown, which is derived from the loss development pattern, completely determines the estimate of loss reserves or IBNR depending on whether you're using the paid or the incurred version of the BF method. If your initial expected ultimate loss assumption is not reasonable, the results of the BF method are not going to be reasonable. Here's another way to look at it. I sometimes like to think of the BF method as just an allocation technique. So for example, in the paid version of the method, a portion of the initial expected ultimate loss is allocated to loss reserves. And in the incurred version of the method, a portion of the initial expected ultimate loss is allocated to IBNR. So the method isn't calculating anything new per se, it's just allocating a portion of the initial expected ultimate loss assumption using the loss development assumptions. So I hope that perspective helps. Let's take a look at a more thorough example of the paid version of this method in action. Let's talk through one example of the BF method and we're going to use the paid version of the method. I want you to see the mechanics and we're actually going to calculate an estimate of ultimate loss from this very simple example. So 
We're going to follow up from our previous example. We have an accident year at age 12 months, and through 12 months, the accident year has $30,000 of paid loss. And further, suppose for this accident year, the percent of ultimate loss expected to be paid through 12 months is equal to 10%. And that number would be derived from a loss development pattern, a paid loss development pattern. Lastly, suppose the initial expected ultimate loss assumption for this accident year is equal to $500,000. We're not going to talk about the source of that, but what I do want you to appreciate is that there's always going to be an initial expected ultimate loss in the BF method, and it's going to drive the outcome of the method. So understanding the source of it in practice is very important. The estimate of ultimate loss for the paid version of the BF method is equal to the paid loss plus an estimate of loss reserves. And we can write this another way. The estimate of ultimate loss is the paid loss plus the quantity, the percent of ultimate unpaid, that's an amount that would be derived from the loss development pattern, times our estimate of the initial expected ultimate loss. So let's rewrite this formula being even more specific. What we're calculating here is an estimate of ultimate loss for a specific accident year based on data through 12 months. So this is equal to the, paid, the actual paid loss for the accident year at 12 months. And to that, we're going to add the following quantity. The percent of ultimate unpaid for an accident year at age 12. Again, this would be derived from a loss development pattern, and it's an estimate. We're going to multiply that by our estimate of the initial expected ultimate loss for the accident year under review. So let's substitute some values into this equation. Our estimate of ultimate loss is equal to $30,000, which is our paid loss, plus the following quantity, 90% times $500,000. So the 90% is the percent of ultimate unpaid based on our development pattern. And if you look at the example, we have the percent of ultimate loss expected to be paid through 12 months is 10%. So the percent expected to be unpaid at the same point in time is 1 minus 10% or 90%. So when we do the math, we come up with $30,000 plus an estimate for the loss reserves of $450,000. Combined, our estimate of ultimate loss in this example is $480,000. So notice that our estimate of ultimate loss of $480,000 is $20,000 less than our initial expected ultimate loss. And from this relationship, we can conclude that the payments to date were less than expected. So why is that the case? Let's explore this a little bit. Notice that based on our loss development pattern, the percent of loss expected to be paid through 12 months is 10%. And our initial expected ultimate loss for the accident year is $500,000. So combining those two components, we can conclude that $50,000 of loss was expected to be paid through 12 months. However, only $30,000 of loss has been paid through 12 months. So the difference between $50,000 and $30,000 is our missing $20,000. So another way to say this is, if the actual paid loss through 12 months was $50,000, our estimate via the BF method would equal $500,000, which would also equal our initial expected ultimate loss assumption. I hope you found this information valuable. There's a lot more that can be said about the Bornhuter Ferguson method. But for now, remember the two key assumptions are the initial expected ultimate loss and the loss development patterns. And the results of the method are only as good as these two critical assumptions. I hope that when you encounter this method in practice, you'll spend some time investigating the source of these assumptions. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. 
And if you're looking for an actuary to help you make sense of your reserving process, be sure to reach out to me. You can find me at archeractuarial.com. Thanks for joining.